Welcome to Lesson 9 of the GANS training. The objective of Lesson 9 is to introduce the user to modeling stochastic behavior in GANS. We have shown in Lesson 8 how to introduce a shock on exogenous variables. In our example of a simple CGE model, the size of the shock was known. We knew to increase labor supply by 10%. But in some cases, Shocks are unpredictable. For example, changes in crop yields due to variations in rainfall, or fluctuation in the world price of a barrel of oil given the uncertainty in finding new oil deposits. When value of exogenous variables or parameters are uncertain, we can model their behavior as stochastic or random but in effect, their evolution is not totally random. For example, crop yields typically do not vary between zero and infinity, nor does the price of a barrel of oil. So in most cases, the economist has some information. For example, on the average value of the variable, or its volatility, or its distribution. So in this lesson, the user will learn how to generate random values in GAMS using this information and how to run simulations in GAMS using these random values. First, we will show how to generate random numbers in GAMS. In GAMS, you can use distribution functions to generate random numbers. The following table lists available distributions in GAMS. It is not our objective in this lesson to cover in detail the distribution functions available in GAMS. We refer you instead to Appendix J4 of the GAMS User's Guide for a complete list of distribution functions and their description. Each type of distribution function requires additional information to generate random numbers. Again, we refer you to Appendix J4, Table J3 of the GAMS User's Guide for a complete description of distribution functions, continuous and discrete, and their required arguments. Note that in Appendix, for each distribution, an external link to mathworldwolfram.com directs the user to a complete mathematical and graphical description of the corresponding distribution. Once the distribution is known, the GAMS syntax is straightforward. We illustrate with a few examples. Assume that variable x displays a stochastic behavior that follows a uniform distribution. To generate random values of x following a uniform distribution, the user must specify as arguments to the uniform distribution the minimum and maximum values that variable x can take. So the following syntax applies. First, the keyword uniform, followed by the minimum and maximum values in parentheses. To generate a random value for x using a uniform distribution between 1 and 10, we would write x equals the distribution function uniform, followed by the value 1 and 10, in parentheses and separated by a comma. The semicolon ends the distribution statement. To generate only integer values, we use the uniform int distribution function and specify again the minimum and maximum values that x can take. In GAMS IDE, we would write and run the following code. Declare parameter x, assign the value of uniform distribution with minimum 1 and maximum 10 to x, and display x. Next, assign the value of a uniform distribution of integer with minimum 1 and maximum 10 to x, display x with its new values. This is what you will see in the list file. The first display shows the value between 1 and 10 randomly assigned to x. 
we show a value of 2.546, but running the same code on your computer may produce a different number. Similarly, the second display shows the integer between 1 and 10 randomly assigned to x. Again, we show a value of 9, but the same code may generate a different number on your computer. Most likely, we do not want to generate a single random number for a given variable, but rather a series of random numbers. One way we can produce multiple random numbers for a stochastic variable is to repeat the distribution statement multiple times. So the following code would generate three random values for parameter x. 2.546, 8.589, and 5.953. Again, the same code could draw different random values on your computer. However, this way could become quickly and practical for a large number of random draws. So another way is to define sets that will have as items the number of draws. For example, Suppose we want to generate 100 random numbers for x. First, we define a set that would include 100 items and define the parameter x over that set. We illustrate with an example. The following code will generate and display 100 integer random values between 1 and 10 for parameter x in the list file. So first, we define a set we call draw with 100 elements. Next, we define the parameter x on the set draw. Using the distribution function uniform int, we generate 100 numbers random integer values between 1 and 10 that we assign to x. Note that the name of the set is entirely up to the user. Also, the elements of the set do not have to start from 1. They could as well represent, for example, time periods such as 2015 to 3014. Next, we will show how to run stochastic simulations in GAMS. Usually, we generate random numbers in economic models to run stochastic simulations. We illustrate with an example based on the model presented in Lesson 8. But we will only present the sections that have changed. Assume that the productivity of capital displays stochastic behavior because, for example, crop production is variable due to fluctuation in rainfall. Assume further that the productivity of capital follows a normal distribution with a mean equal to 1 and a standard deviation equal to 10%. Finally, Assume that the observed data used to calibrate the model represent an average year. To reflect these assumptions, the only change we will make in the mathematical structure of the model is to multiply the capital demand variable KD in the production function by a parameter PRD. So now, the Cobb-Douglas function from Lesson 8 will read y output is equal to a, a scale parameter, times prd, times capital demand kd, both raised to the power alpha, times labor demand lg raised to the power 1 minus alpha. prd represents the productivity of capital. So when PRD equals 1, we have the same structure as in Lesson 8, but for any other value, the demand of capital will vary. We proceed in two steps. 
First, in a separate GAMS file in GAMS IDE, which we call DrawGAMS, we create a small program to generate and store the values from the random draw. So we define a set D, which includes the number of draws, 30 in our example. We then declare a parameter PRD underscore STC, which stands for Productivity Stochastic. It is indexed in D and will store the random values of the productivity factor PRD over the 30 draws. Remember to save all files in the same directory as a project file. We created a new file. If you store it in a different directory than your project file, you will need to specify its location specifically. Next, we generate random values for the productivity factor assuming a normal distribution of mean 1 and standard deviation of 0 0.1. We use the command normal and the syntax is as follows. The parameter PRD underscore STC is assigned a normal distribution with mean 1 and standard deviation 0 0.1. We store the results for PRD underscore STC in a GDX file, which we will be able to call from the main program. The syntax is as follows. We use the execute and load statement, followed by the name of the file, draw, within quotes, followed by a comma and the parameter to store, PRD underscore STC. Run the program in GAMS IDE to generate the random values and create the GDX file DrawGDX. For more information on GDX file management, we refer you to Lesson 7. In the main GAMS program from Lesson 8, we add the parameter PRG to the declaration of parameters. This parameter has the same name as the one defined in the program DrawGAMS. And since we assumed that the data reflects an average year and that the distribution mean is 1, we assign a value of 1 to PRD. Note that in addition, we must recalibrate the scale parameter A since now it must take into account the productivity factor of capital to reflect the revised production function. At this time, A would have the same value as in the previous lesson, since PDR is 1. For all other values, A would of course change also. We must also modify equation Y underscore EQ to include the productivity factor. So we attach a productivity factor to the capital variable. Again, since we have assigned a value of 1 to parameter PRD, if we ran the model at this time, we would obtain the exact same results as the ones in lesson 8. Let's say we want to monitor national production given the stochastic productivity of capital. At the end of the main GAMS program from Lesson 8, which we just modify, we add the following. Consistent with a separate GAMS program, DrawGAMS, we define a set named D, which includes 30 draws and create two new parameters, PRD underscore STC, which will store the random values of the productivity factor PRD over the 30 draws, and Y underscore STC, which will store the resulting values of variable Y under the different simulations or draws. Note that we could have chosen other variables to monitor. In our example, we focused on national income, but you could have followed the same process for every variable in the model. 
Next, we need to import the data generated by the previous program, Draw GANS. Recall from Lesson 7 the syntax for importing data from a GDX file. The dollar option, $GDXIN, followed by the name of the GDX file, Draw GDX. Then the dollar $load option, followed by the parameter to be read. Again, we refer you to Lesson 7 for more information on GDX file management. The next part is a bit more complex, since we want to run the model for each value of PRD underscore STC and store the results for variable Y in Y underscore STC. As we saw previously in Lesson 6, this iterative process is best done using the loop statement. We use the loop command to solve the model iteratively over the draws or set D. So, for each draw or element of D, parameter PRD, which appear in the income equation Y underscore EQ, is assigned the stochastic values stored in PRD underscore STC. The model solve, and parameter Y underscore STC is assigned the solution value for each draw. Note the closing parenthesis of the loop statement and the semicolon at the end of the statement. In other words, GAMS first assigns to PRD the value assigned to PRD underscore STC in the first row, D equal 1. The model solves and stores the current value of variable Y for the first solve and then moves to the second row, where it follows the same process. Assignment, solve the model, store the result, moves to the third row, and start all over again until the last row, d equals 30. Finally, we end the program with a display command of both the national production y underscore stc and the stochastic values of capital productivity, PRD, underscore STC. Run the model in GAMS ID. This is what you will see in the list file. The evolution of the national production, given the stochastic values of the capital productivity over the 30 draws. Not surprisingly, all else being constant, the greater the productivity of capital, the larger the national production. Also at this point, you could try to export these results to a GDX or XLSX file to obtain results in a table format. We now conclude Lesson 9 of the GAMS training, and for your assignment, use the GAMS file from Lesson 8 and introduce the productivity factor. Create a separate program, but in the same directory, that will generate random draws. You can make the same assumption we made, a normal distribution with mean 1 and standard deviation of 0 0.1. Run stochastic simulations following the instructions given in this lesson. <laughs>